Hello there, and welcome to this video of me reading chapter one of my new book uh, on creating and celebrating characters. Uh, my name is Ron Collins. I'm a science fiction and fantasy writer, um, and I am running a Kickstarter for that book. And we have crossed a major stretch goal, and part of that stretch goal was, or the stretch goal was, that I would read this chapter aloud. Um, and I'm going to try to have a really good time with it. Um, I will do, um, I will go through and obviously read the, the chapter. We will see what happens. <laughs> I may have commentary along the way, or I may not. I'm kind of making this up as I go. Um, but let me start by uh, thanking all of my Kickstarter backers who have made this happen. Uh, I'll get more <laughs> to that more at the end, obviously, also. Um, anyway, with that, let me uh, jump in, and, and I will begin reading Chapter 1. Celebrating Characters. See, author commentary already. What a great way to start a book about creating and celebrating characters, right? Start with celebrating. Yay! Um, I love characters. Story is character and character is story. Let's talk about what makes people real. That's what my favorite characters are to me. Real. If you're reading this, I suspect that's what they are to you, too. Characters I love often feel as real to me as people I know in the physical world. Whether from books, movies, comics, television shows, or any other form of entertainment, the characters I love mean something to me. They give me hope. They teach me lessons that become ingrained into the fabric that makes me who I am. As you'll soon discover, if you get me spun up, <laughs> I can talk about my favorite characters in the same way I talk about my best friends. So yes, characters I love are real to me, and there isn't anything you can do or say to convince me otherwise. If you're the same way, this book is for you. I think it's fair to say that marvelous characters that I find in books are even more special than those I come across in various visual formats, because since these characters exist only in my mind, they become at least partially personal. Whereas a hero of mine in the real world, or other visual arts, belong to everyone, I'll find it, it's right here, belong to everyone, I am free to envision characters in books however I want. My Sherlock Holmes is different from yours, right? I came across him differently than you did, and I built my understanding of it on my own. You are, of course, free to have your own Sherlock Holmes. That's the beauty of great characters, particularly in books. They live in a multiverse constrained only by the size of humanity itself. Right? I mean, that's a, a aside. That's, isn't that something that is amazing about characters in books, right? Is that I get to own, I bring myself into that. That's what it means, I think, for a reader to bring themselves into a, into a book, right? Um, enough aside. Great characters matter to us. We can create metaphors around great characters, meaning that, like any celebrity, a well-written character can be a, a spectacular can be a spectacular source of gossip, which is something else we humans like to do. Did you see the look? Did you see the look? Insert favorite character from your favorite show here gave him when, insert your favorite heartthrob here, walked into the room, if they're not together by next week, I'm gonna throw a chair through the screen. I once heard Paul Simon talking about his song, Mrs. Robinson, in which he asked the famous question about where Joe, where Joe DiMaggio has gone. As I recall, 
Simon reported that the literal-minded DiMaggio wasn't particularly happy with the reference, suggesting he hadn't gone anywhere. I guess Joe wasn't comfortable being a metaphor, Simon said. Yet, metaphor he was, simply because his celebrity turned his persona, turned the persona he portrayed to the public into the form of a character, real, real person, but not real, the persona. There's Michael Jordan, and there's Michael Jordan the person. Unless we are a friend of his, all we will get is the metaphor. Q Jordan's, and I took that personally, meme. <laughs> I think that's an important thing, right? I mean, um, especially in today's world where information is so, so out there and free about people, um, you know, when you read somebody's Facebook posts, right, you only get the picture that they have given you and you make up the stuff inside your head. Um, what does it mean to celebrate characters? Well, that's an interesting question. I have asked it of myself often while putting this book together. This is what happens when I flash on a title and think, hey, that sounds fun, <laughs> and then find myself having to write it. I tend to overthink these things, you know. I give an off-the-cuff answer, and then I argue with myself. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's fun to me in my head. I don't think I'm alone in this matter, though. Describing exactly why we love the characters we love can be hard to grapple with. People are complex and weird. But we try. And in the end, we'll get the job done. That's a form of celebration, isn't it? We love these characters for who they are and how they make us feel. You'll find some of that in this book. Writers, of course, can talk about characters all the time. At least when we're not talking about business. <laughs> At first, I didn't consider that discussion to be a form of celebration so much as a vivisection. <laughs> But on the other hand, medical folks love doing horrible things while learning how the body works, so what do I know? And writers do what they can to learn about characters. We go to workshops to share tips and ideas. We read, we mimic, we listen to podcasts. We think about such dry things as the value and purpose of characters in stories, though we don't put it that way all the time. Recently, for example, I saw David B. Coe, who is a friend of mine and who has provided blurbs for my work in the past. He posted advice about characters, specifically how to change the dynamic of established ensembles by inserting new characters into your work. In this case, he examined what happened when Star Trek The Next Generation inserted Rogue Laren, a Bajoran rebel, <clears throat> turned Starfleet officer, pardon me, into the mix. Or when Buffy the Ban... Buffy the Vampire? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. When Buffy the Vampire Slayer added the morally ambiguous Faith Lahane into the cast. And when Southern Republican Ainsley Hayes joined the West Wing. Each of these, he said, spiced up the mix and added new complexities for stories that couldn't exist without their new blood. I think he's spot on. In the end, this examination counts as a form of celebration, too. The desire to know everything about another person. The desire to know everything about another person is a sincere form of flattery, right? And flattery is celebration. Fair? I think that's completely fair. When you're enjoying your friends and you're talking about how great they are, you are celebrating your friends. When you're talking about the fantastic Batman movie you just saw, or uh, Orphan Black, one of my favorites and that I talk about inside the, inside the rest of the book. When you're talking about what Tatiana Maslany did with Sarah Manning and, um, and Ang uh, Ainsley, <laughs> Ainsley. Um, and Allison Hendricks and so forth. 
it's just you're enjoying them, you're celebrating them, right? That's my thought pattern at this at this point. Um, so back in, let's see, here we are. As you might guess, there will be a lot of this type of celebration in this book too. Then there are the more ephemeral aspects of our celeb celebrations, the way we keep characters on the edges of our existence, using them to leverage more ideas. What would James Bond do here, we might ask ourselves. This is the area of the subconscious, the act of incorporating these characters into the fabric of who we are and into our future work. We, both writers and readers, dream about characters. Sometimes so much that, as my friend Lisa Silverthorne relates about her most recent work <laughs> series, she wakes up at three o'clock in the morning with her characters demanding three more books. Or four. <laughs> Inside joke for Lisa if she happens to ever listen to this. <laughs> um, speaking for myself, I sometimes model characters off real people, mixing and matching parts, grafting them together to make my own Frankenstein's monster. One of my favorite short stories features a character who is an amalgam of multiple members of my family. In this fashion, that character is a ghostly golem that came from nowhere, really. That aspect of generation, how characters are born, it's another form of celebration. Do they jump whole cloth from my imagination? Did I draw them up in character sheets? I've heard writers say they interview their characters before they put them on the page. Interesting. I've heard of other writers who write letters from their characters' points of view. Years back, I ran across a writer who had pasted images of people they found intriguing into notebooks so they could use them to inspire their own characters, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> the ideas are infinite and no path is wrong. Sharing origin stories is a form of celebration though, right? You'll find touches of that spice in the mix here too. Regardless of how writers square the corners, the goal is the same. We want to create characters that readers love and remember. We want to create characters that matter. As a pragmatic matter, creating these interesting, well-rounded and believable characters is an essential aspect of writing good fiction. But beyond that, it's just flat out fun. <laughs> uh, it, it's just flat out fun. You get a character. If you've written, a, if you are a writer and you have written a character that you love, you know exactly what I mean by that, um, right? Great characters are the lifeblood of any story because great characters are what makes stories memorable, both the reading and the writing thereof. We become emotionally invested in characters that matter because. They make our stories engaging. We love them because they help us step away from our own lives for just those few moments. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, John Wick, Harley Quinn, Jack Reacher, Katniss Everdeen, John McClane, Lisbeth Salander, Joe, Meg, Amy, and Beth. These characters are bigger than life even if you haven't read the books these characters are from, it's likely their names put images into your head. We are all human beings, after all, at least until our AR, AI overlords fully arrive, which maybe is next Tuesday, right? <laughs> uh, or maybe they're here. We like to daydream. Great, engaging characters help us to live in other shoes. The challenge, of course, is how to make characters that readers will remember. Which is why I'm here now. I'm writing this little book because, well, I'm the, I'm the teensiest bit analytical. <laughs> and, and because I want to talk about what characters mean to me. And yes, cue all of my friends laughing at that 
teeniest bit analytical. Why are these characters important? How do they come about when I'm writing them? Why do they matter when I'm reading? Though I'll be sprinkling in a bit of advice here and there, this isn't meant as a cold how-to manual. So much of a celebratory why-to gathering of all the characters I consider fun. But of course, if a writer or a reader for that matter, grasp the why of it, then the recursive magic of how kicks in so much more fully. Don't ask me why that work, why it works that way, but trust me when I say that it does. Life is full of tricky bits like that, and I figure if you were ever to get to the point where you understand completely how this works, then it just, it, it wouldn't be fun anymore. So that's why I'm doing this. So that's what I am doing in this celebration of great characters. Among other things, I'll be talking about why I love various characters and what I'm thinking about as I go about my toils in trying to create my own. Along the way, I'll be defining myself a bit too, because that's another thing about the characters we love. Our fandom helps define our identities. The kinds of characters we love tell the world who we are. This book will be only a partial picture of me, though. I say that because so this book can appeal to the widest audience I can reach, I've chosen to examine characters drawn from stories that are widely known. That makes sense, right? I want you my reader, to be able to relate to these characters, so I'll not spend time on hundreds of characters I also love, but who appeared in smaller niche publications. I'll not talk about Iret Patterson's Ben, for example, nor Lisa Silverthorne's Bodie Jameson. It also means I'll pull from multiple forms of media, movies and televisions, televisions, television, as well as books and comics. All I can promise is that every character I mention, and there will be quite a cast, is someone I love in one fashion or another. I hope you love them too, of course. If you love the same characters I do, that's wonderful. But it will be even better if something you read here makes you see your own list of loves in a different and deeper way. That's a form of celebration too, isn't it? If you like reading about, talking about, and thinking about your favorite characters in ways you haven't done before, I think you'll like reading this book. I know I have loved writing it. And that, my friends, is the end of chapter one of On Creating and Celebrating Characters. Uh, my new book that I'm very excited about, uh, kickstarting now, and then will be available in out in public uh, after the Kickstarter closes, because right? that's part of the fun of being a part of a Kickstarter is that you get to get more of an exclusive uh, exclusive right into the work that's going on there. So I do uh, want to thank all of the backers who have helped this project achieve the goal that it has achieved. Uh, still have another seven days, I think, if I'm counting that right, uh, next Saturday, and this is Saturday, um, until we uh, close. So there's time to, to um, there's time to join. <laughs> time to join in all the celebration and all the fun. Uh, I do want to thank uh, a few by name who have agreed to opt in to this. Uh, I want to thank uh, Keith West, um, uh, who... I'm not 100% certain, but I think can also be referred to as future potentate of the solar system. Um, if I'm wrong there, Keith, I apologize, um, but I, I kind of like that name too, and it conjures all sorts of character things in my brain. <laughs> thank you so much for your support. I want to thank uh, Michael Burstein, um, 
who has actually been a bit of an idol of, of mine. Uh, I have idolized him for, to, <laughs> for a long time. As I was coming up, he was a little bit ahead of me. Uh, he, he is a name that was always in analog. Uh, his short story, I think it's, uh, uh, what, Kaddish, uh, Kaddish for Last Survivor, um, is a story that has always stuck in my head. He is a fantastic writer of short stories. Thank you, Michael. Like I said, when your name popped up, I just went, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so excited <laughs> to be supported by somebody who I admire so much. Uh, Mary Jo Rabe, um, um, who I know actually lives in Germany and I have met a, a few times. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate all of the dedication that you bring to the craft. Um, and and it, it's such a joy to see you backing me. It makes me feel so, uh, so good. Laura Ware. Uh, thank you for the inspiration. Um, thank you for backing also, uh, but you are a person who I have admired also from um, from seeing the way you have gone about creating your own craft and your own work. Um, um, it, it's really it's really fun. Uh, it's really fun to to know who you are and to see you grow in the way that you've grown, and it is <laughs> you are quite an inspiration. Um, Johanna. I will just say Johanna. Thank you so much, Johanna. Um, I, as a, a personal aside, uh, when I saw your name come up and you said, just Johanna, uh, it made me flash on uh, two of my friends, actually, a schoolmate and her mother, both of whom were named Johanna. Uh, her mother was from Austria, and I can remember sitting in her basement and hearing her tell stories about being a little girl in World War II. <laughs> Uh, very stunning, and so the name Johanna always brings that reference up to me and makes me makes me smile, not only for them, but for you too. Thank you so much. Um, Laura Rainbow Dragon, who I have found is a co-Black uh, Orphan, um, uh, Black Orphan fan. Orphan Black, Black Orphan, Orphan Black. Yeah. Thank you so much for your support. I hope that you uh, enjoy the uh, Orphan Black studies that I've done in here, uh, it is, uh, I feel it's stunning. I just, one of my favorite, uh, favorite things. The amazing Kelly Washington, who is a fantastic writer in her own mind and, uh, who suggested that I could go off on another stream if I wanted. So I'm going to call her the amazing Kelly Washington, princess of prose. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate your support. Um, it means a whole lot to me. Céline Marjan. I think I'm pronouncing that properly. Céline Marjan. Don't know. I'm not great with French. I grew up in Kentucky. But uh, when, I, when I saw uh, Céline's name pop up, it immediately made me flash onto uh, the recent, I think it was Analog Podcast, where she and Marie Verbert were on a double feature. Really great, uh, great thing. You can chase her work down. Thank you, Celine. I appreciate your support. Uh, hope that I have properly, <laughs> uh, probably, uh, properly dealt with your name because my Midwestern American tongue is not fantastic with that. Um, and finally, Z Cannon. Um, uh, thank you, Z, for your support. Uh, I, I have never, one of the things that I love the most about Kickstarter is that you get the names of the backers. It's not like the faceless sales sheet off of Drafted Digital or Barnes & Noble or Amazon or whatever. You get the names, right? And I could be wrong. I, I haven't actually gone back to look it up, but I remember I, I recognized the name and my feeling is, is that Z also supported uh, my first book in this kind of uh, nonfiction form being... Um, on writing and reading short, which is all about short fiction. So anyway, when I saw Z's name pop up, I was like, oh, I, I think I've got, I, I think I remember that name from before. So regardless of whether I am remembering that name properly from the time before or not, thank you for all of your support. And like I said, the thing that I love about Kickstarter over almost all other forms of, of um, of um, publication that I do is that I get to see the names and there becomes a really personal connection there and it makes me so happy uh, to see the names of actual people coming in the numbers of people coming in to support me 
Um, I will I will stop <laughs> I will stop rambling on that. Uh, but uh, but thank you again so much. If you did not opt in um, and you're one of the uh, silent majority, thank you um, from the bottom of my character's hearts. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy the book. Uh, that's me reading the first chapter. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, I will see you on the next stretch goal. Have a fantastic day. Well, you're in there. I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that you were in there.